Uh, Anonymous in Columbus, Ohio, listening on 820 AM. Anonymous, you are on with Patrick Lencioni. Hi, Patrick. Hi there. Beautiful name, by the way. Question. Hmm? That's a beautiful name. Anonymous. Oh. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm a Catholic school teacher who's kind of at the bottom of the totem pole as far as, like, um, hierarchy goes in her school. I'm one of the newer ones. And I've noticed in the past couple of years working there that while we have many gifts, I'm seeing the spirituality of our school kind of die. Um, there, there's not a lot of joy in the gospel. And I'm watching that happen with our teachers and their spirituality. And it looks like the leadership is getting really worried about money. So the focus is more on tuition than on the individual child. And I've been praying on that and feeling really um, unrestful about it. And I'm trying to figure out how to bring some of those concerns up to my principal and to our pastor without sounding like I'm telling them they're not doing a good job. Like how to maybe shed a light on something we have a need for that I'd like to help with without putting them on the defensive or making them think that I'm accusing them of not doing a good job at their job. That's a beautiful um, desire, and and I do have some advice about that. I'm a big believer in managing upward, and I think the issue is humility and the kind truth. And much of my career was predicated on me being the guy – people used to shove me into the CEO's office and say, you tell him. And and I'd be like, you you work for him. I don't work for him. Yeah, but he listens to you. And, and I think it's because I learned how to tell them what they needed to hear in a way that was kind and didn't, didn't threaten them. Because I honored them and I said, I, you have a hard job. I couldn't do this job. I know how hard it is and I don't want you to think I'm condescending. In other words, exactly what you just said, Anonymous, and, and go to them and say, the last thing I would ever want to do is seem like I was trying to tell you how to do your job. But I feel like if we, if we really recommitted to the spiritual joy of the gospel in the school – it would really help, and, and I would love to help you in any way. And I will put myself at your disposal to do that. I have some ideas, but I'm, I'm open to your ideas too, but I, this is really important to me. And, and just so you know, I'm going to pray for you and for the school all the time. The other thing, so I would say, go do that. Let me tell you something. One time out, time out of 100, somebody's going to get fired for doing that. 50 times out of 100, they're going to say, they're going to ignore it. 40 40 times, they're going to go, that's so wonderful, let me help you. There's no real cost to doing this. If they ignore it, you've done your very best. And just keep praying, because God can make things happen. But, but, I mean, almost half the time, probably, that's my guess, is they're going to go, wow, this is great. That's disarming the way you've asked us. What are your ideas? But, But go in there with that kind of attitude. And here's the other thing I would say is call my friends in Los Angeles, the Carmelite sisters of Alhambra, of the, and ask them to pray for you. These women are the dearest human beings so close to Jesus, and they will pray for you. And if you can get religious communities praying for you, God will open up doors. I think sometimes God is just like, why aren't you people asking me to help you? I will help you. So it sounds like you're already there. It sounds like you're doing the right things. And just be really vulnerable and anticipate their objections. Just say, I know I'm young, I know I'm not the, at the top of the hierarchy, and I know I don't want to con- make you think I'm c- criticizing you. I'm here to help you, and they will probably love you for that. Okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Sure. God bless you.